have some or one example concerning marine seismic surveying with some glimpse of the uh, data processing that have been done by number of geophysicists. This is the source and it's available on the internet. It's called uh, 3D Marine Seismic Data Processing. Uh, Dave Borheim, Bore Bore John Kingston, Phil Shaw, Jack Van Zilist, and Orbington, uh, all working at Orbington, England. So we start by having some information. Excuse me? Marine survey. Is it marine survey? Yes, marine survey. Yeah. I, I, I guess we, we, we said that at the start that we are going to have an example of uh, marine survey. As you see, we have here the uh, trajectories of the vessels that are used for uh, combining the data. Now you have also two stations and the, so the, the yellow uh, boundary you, have, you see, this is the shore, shoreline and we have two radar uh, stations and these stations are used for DGPS and if you remember DGPS is a differential GPS uh, system and the importance of using uh, this is to have as accurate positioning as possible. Uh, also, you can see the area of, of coverage, highest coverage uh, marked by certain uh, tetragonal here. Here it's 3D marine seismic surveying, survey vessels and bears, which means that we have two vessels or many uh, moving uh, together. Uh, each pair, each traveling two sets of gun uh, arrays and two hydrophone streamers. This, uh, this acquisition system can survey up to 16 seismic lines in one traverse of the ocean. So these two ships, these two vessels, towing until uh, each one can, can, can tow uh, more, uh, up to eight lines for one and each has is equipped with seismic uh, sources. So the two vessels at every shot can acquire 60, uh, 16 seismic uh, lines. They sweep the area recording up to 1,000 seismic traces per streamer every 5 to uh, 10 seconds. Uh, and each time a gun array offers over a typical survey area 20 by 20 kilometers, around 100 billion data samples are collected. So this is a, a swift uh, view how the, the marine survey in the, in the present example was carried. And uh, the, the most important point that this slide is trying to tell us that we are having vast number of data. We have uh, thousands of uh, traces and we have millions, about 100 millions of uh, of uh, data points or data uh, sum. So this is a big uh, challenge for us as a geophysicist to uh, process and then to interpret such survey in 
time-efficient manner. This is another view of the situation. Here we have Geco's uh, quad quad uh, arrange. Uh, sorry, Geco's quad quad arrangement. So they are looking like uh, using Bahasa Malay in uh, <laughs> like quad quad. <laughs> no, but it means. Four, uh, if each vessel have four uh, stream, uh, streamers, uh, quad quad arrangement of gun arrays and the streamers from two vessels sailing in tandem provide, provides up to 16 distinct seismic lines. So this is uh, a glimpse or uh, an example of the vessels and the equipments and also the expected seismic lines we are going to obtain. We have here up to 16 seismic uh, lines. As you can see, can anyone tell me, now we have four streamers and four streamers. So the net will be four plus four equal equal eight. So how come he, he, he speaks about 16 seismic lines? OK. Yes, Shafiq? Four times two? Yes. Sharaw. Four square? We are not speaking about algebra, but I'm, I'm telling, asking you how we have, now we have eight streamers, so how come we have, we can have up to 16 seismic? Uh, lines. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, so one she has four, right? So each I I see from this picture each each stream emits four. So that's why four times four is sixteen. Yes. So so the other sheep also emits sixteen. <laughs> yes. Okay. I myself get. Uh, confused life like you. <laughs> okay, the, the, the situation here is that cons uh, considering shot at the right uh, vessel, the shot at the right vessel will produce eight traces, eight seismic traces. Okay, and also shots at the left vessel will also produce another eight seismic traces and the, for each sweep we have excuse me for each sweep we have the reflection from 16 points in the subsurface you of, of course you know what what sweep mean yes if you use extra more, more uh, streamers if you use extra sources, you can have more than 60. So this, this uh, ray buffer indicate the, the successive ray buffer? Yes, this is, but this is illustration. It's not the true, uh, the true situation, of course. But this is to illustrate that from certain source, here we have one source, and here we have, in the other uh, direction, we have another source. And each one, we have fire in, in the, for the for the other direction, and also we have fire in uh, in direct or forward direction. If we count eight plus eight, it equals uh, sixty. Okay.
Yes. You, you are right, but we have considering one source at, at one, uh, one of the vessels, it will be recorded at eight streams. Okay, the source, the source array at one, one vessel will be recorded at eight streams. And the source, the source array of the second vessel will, be, will also be recorded at eight streamers. Okay? What do you... We have, we have actually more than uh, one source. We have, if you remember the marine surveying, we have an uh, array of sources. We have array of sources to to remove the effect of, uh, of bubble, the bubble effects, and to to re, uh, to uh, shorten the the signature or the wavelet of the source. Okay. Move or excuse me. Where each source and each four. What? What do you mean? Each ship has two sources. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes, you are you are right. Yes. Yes. As you said, you are right. We have in this picture, we have for each vessel, yes? So you, you are pointing at, at something. Discussion. The discussion cannot be between you and Yvonne. I must be involved. Okay? So what Hazim said is uh, actually true. In this uh, graph, we have two sources for each. Uh, Two source arrays for uh, for each uh, vessel and two streamers, and uh, it's now uh, every source will produce four uh, will produce four uh, seismic uh, profiles. So four times four will give us uh, sixty. Yes. So what's what's the problem? What, what, Tell us maybe you, what your point is. You didn't see it. Okay. And if you remember, after uh, collecting the, the data, after gathering the data, normally, normally we are uh, going into the. A basic seismic data processing sequence, which start by uh, gathering of seismic data, either in short gathering, uh, sorry, short gather, or uh, zero offset gather, or common midpoint gather. <clears throat> Here, we are uh, we are viewing the point related to the common midpoint. Uh, gather. As you can see here, the vessel is moving, and uh, at, at each at, uh, at each uh, position, shooting is uh, carried out, and the recording also is carried out from the graph at the upper upper panel. You can see that we have trace or uh, mapping the points of the subsurface. So. R's here, R1, R2, R3, until R6. R6 are the uh, points or 
between two brackets is the predicted uh, points of reflection in the subsurface for each successive source. Then we have uh, R6 as the, the, the complete fold. Here we have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No, one, two, three, four, until six. So we have here, how many fold we have here? How many fold we have here? We have six. Okay, okay Adib, why we have six? How, how, what's the meaning of, of fold? So, fold, uh, so you have another opinion about the, the folds, the number of folds here? You don't have other opinion? Yes. Yes, uh, Muhammad, Muhammad Khairul Rubwan. How many folds we have here? Okay, what's the meaning of fold? Fold. F O L D. Number of stacking? Number of stacking? No. No. In, in, I, I guess in, in Bahasa it means laggy, time. So here we shot first time and then another shot and then another shot until we finish all the shots. So here we have six fold. Six times we are shooting and recording. So the complete fold here is attributed to the reflection point number six. Okay? And this is what is meant by fold. How many times recording came from that point? So fold means repetition or how many times we got reflection from that point. So it's not the same as the geological term? Of course. Because uh, it's the same meaning? Yes, uh, you know, we have uh, in English and uh, maybe in many other language, we have for the same, for the same word, we have number of meanings. Okay? So now uh, we have number, uh, okay, let me uh, ask another question before going forward. Uh, for the point R4, R4, can you, can you tell me how number of folds we have for this point? Yes, R4. Who said three? You shut up? Why? You can count. Count one, two, three, and four. So you you, you, you didn't count right or you, you have another way or viewpoint. <clears throat> so for each, for each point, number of folds means the number of traces we are going to acquire. So if we are going to, if we are speaking about R6, so we are expecting in the CMB gather 
to have six traces. And in the middle panel, we see this, we see these six traces. And as you, as you see, they are not of zero offset. Zero offset means, what's the meaning of zero offset? We are at the end of the course, you should have, uh, I'm, I'm asking your uh, colleague, can you, can you tell me what is, and try not to, to give her any, any comments or anything. She told you, or you, it's your, okay. That's right. Zero offset means that the shot and the receiver are the same point, which means that we are assuming that we have both the shot and the receiver at this point just above the R6, R6 point, and then the energy move downward, then it meets or find the reflector, then it reflected on itself back to the same and recorded at the same point. This is what's called zero offset. And because of this, we say, we, we mark or we, we, we see the time axis as two-way time. Why two-way time? Because it's the ray travels the, the same distance, which is the depth or thickness, travels twice. So we have to keep in mind that at the final stage, we should, in order to find the depth, we should, uh, we must divide the time by two. Okay? The lower panel here is the same here but in trace form. So here are the trays belonging to the, the least slant from the normal, whereas this one is the farthest one. So we have a change in time here. Why? Because the change of the path each ray followed in his journey from the source to receiver. Okay? So, as we, are, as we hope to obtain only the normal incidence and the reflection, or the zero offset in other words, we are interested in removing such effect this such this effect is removed via the NMO correction. NMO means normal move out, which can can be further explained as the correction due to the moving away from the normal direction. Okay. Then after removing the NMO effect for each trace. If we plot the traces now after NMO correction, all reflection will, will be corresponding to zero offset reflection. Then we can stack, and stacking meaning, meaning adding trace amplitudes together. So point by point, we are adding. And of course, when we come to this, theoretically, all amplitudes are in phase. So summing up will increase the amplitude by the, uh, the data or, or the reflection I'm looking for which means that the amplitude here for six stack, for six fold stack will be uh, multiplied by six, okay? The interesting 
feature here is that if I'm having here, which is the, the, the real case, if I'm having here noise, either coherent or non-coherent, and coherent means uh, it's unwanted signal. Coherent like ground roll, right, like seismic reflection, and so on. Coherent, coherent means it, it is, uh, it, it obeys physical modeling. It can be reproduced. So, because I'm, I'm, I'm not in, in need for such energy and it's distorting my uh, cross-section, it's one of my uh, intentions is to remove their effect. Thus, this amplitude belongs to, for example, ground roll or seismic refraction or so, will not line up here like this one. Rather, they will be sometime, somehow out of phase or even away or anti-phase or away from each other. So for the worst case, they will keep their amplitudes. But for the best case, they will cancel out. So this is what we mean by enhancing signal to noise ratio. Here for six fold, we have six times amplitude, which means we have enhanced the signal for about six times. Okay? Yes? Yes. This is a, an example of the coherent noise, this one, these are the, the ground roll. And as we uh, understand, uh, ground roll uh, have, uh, ground roll has the highest uh, amplitude uh, on the uh, seismic rock section. Why? Because it travels shorter distances, okay? So it is less attenuated. And also because generally the frequency content, the frequency content of surface wave is uh, relatively lower than the frequency content of the P waves. So, uh, To understand the first point that it, it moves or propagates shorter distance, uh, we are agreeing that we agree that uh, airs act as low, pa low pass filter. Okay, so uh, seismic energy, if moved short distance, the attenuation of the amplitude of high frequency will occur, but with less uh, significance. But if the energy moves longer paths, the uh, attenuation will become large, and then maybe we would, we would end up with no high frequency. Like in ordinary filters, so if the, the filter, water filter, for example, if the filter cartridge is, is small, it will stop some of the unwanted uh, material, but also some will uh, uh, pass through. Don't, don't expect that the filters uh, will, will stop everything. It, will, it won't. But if you use La longer and uh, multi uh, multi uh, units uh, filter, you will probably have better result, but also there will be some some limits. So here, surface waves or ground roll are somehow dominating the record 
due to their higher amplitudes, compared to both uh, uh, the first onset, the first uh, coming ray uh, waves here are the refracted, and also compared to uh, reflection energy here. In order to to remove this, we have two options. The first one, uh, sorry, we have many options. Not, uh, I can uh, tell you three now. The first one, in acquisition time, and in acquisition time, instead of recording at one geophone, we make geophone array or family at the same uh, point with distance. This distance can be used to, uh, so that the ground roll can be removed due to the uh, destructive interference. This at acquisition time. Uh, in seismic data processing, we have two methods. One is the normal uh, move out, but also the ground roll may slip, may move, and be invaded into the, the section after uh, normal move out uh, correction. So we will, if you, if you remember, apply, apply FK filter, which means that we are going to uh, transform the data into wave number frequency domain. And this wave number frequency domain the differentiation between the different kind of energy according to their uh, respective uh, velocity will be clear. So we may apply the so-called, for example, slice filtering or slice rejecting. For slice filtering, we are removing energy, energies around or outside the slice we, divide, we define. Uh, whereas in slice rejection, we are removing the energy inside the slice boundary. Uh, sorry, boundary. Okay. Now we are going to review the effect of deconvolution. You see this one is the section without deconvolution. It's okay, no problem at all. But if we apply spike deconvolution, we will realize that some data or some reflectors become more visible, especially in, the, in those two band region. And then the last one is the deconvolution with 24 millisecond delay. Can, can anyone of you tell me <coughs> what's the meaning of deconvolution with 24 millisecond delay? And what, what, what is the... Uh, the usage or application of such deconvolution? Yes, Taqay. Do you have interpretation? What? What this one? This deconvolution? Is carried for? And what's the meaning of delay deconvolution? Delay deconvolution? Yes. It's a good trial, but it's not the, the true answer. Yes? Okay. Okay, no problem. Uh, 
the, the convolution with 24 millisecond delays are those convolution applied along with autocorrelation to re remove multiples. So if you remember, uh, which is about one week, one week only, but you, you totally. So here, in the last panel, we are removing the uh, multiples from our uh, record. That this means that you didn't uh, study or review this lecture or even read about it. If you remember, the okay, just this word. We have created this filter from the um, from the normal equation, and then applied the convolution of this one with the uh, with the, the signal with uh, multiples. This delay is. Uh, related to these delays. So applying this autocorrelation filter to this one, we, we are going to remove the multiple effect. Okay? So this, was, this is the, the impulse itself, and this is the one that is responsible, responsible for removing the multiples. You did attend this lecture? Yeah, I'm not sure. Okay. Okay, write his name until uh, Mark M was not sure. Okay. Uh, we have also effect Due, due to weather, in bad weather you see this variation, large variation. In good weather, this is a, this is a reading of the canvases, in which the, we have uh, due to bad weather the the stream is moving uh, randomly. The effect of this is here, as you can see, and this will be the last one. So you will see that we have uh, uh, mis, uh, misplacing. This, this bar should be conformal with this one, but due to the, uh, and this one also, this is not, uh, this part is not due to uh, the effect, uh, the, the structural effect, but it is for uh, uh, the, the effect of the navigation uh, problem. Okay, we'll end, we'll end at uh, this point and we'll continue uh, inshallah next week. Okay, I wish you a pleasant weekend. Thank you.